Keep praying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to start tonight by appreciating us for the sacrifice of fasting. There is no gift of fasting. Hallelujah. There's no such thing in the Bible as the gift of fasting. Fasting has always been a sacrifice. So it's not, there's, there's no such, it's not, it's, not, it's not anything unusual when you are tired. There is no gift of fasting. Fasting is not abstinence from food. Fasting is abstinence from food to seek the Lord. If you are not seeking the Lord, you are not fasting. Hallelujah. Most times, people just stay away from food and go around gisting, sleeping, gossiping, allowing the devil to use them. That's not fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food to seek. The seeking part is the difference between fasting and just maybe some sort of diet control or whatever it is. Are we together now? The idea is not to starve yourself. You see, you have to understand this. The idea is not starvation. It was on account of food a man gave away his destiny. He says, I prefer to eat than to have my destiny. What is it in my destiny? Let me exchange that destiny for food. Called Esau in the Bible. He was not clothes. He said, I am so hungry to hell with my destiny. Bring me that pottage of red steel. And his destiny went away. Many people laugh at Esau, but that's what we do all our lives. We allow food to take away the place of an encounter that can change your life forever. There is no one on earth I know, no one, who truly works in authentic power with God, who does not fast. Not just as a ritual, what food is to your sustenance is what fasting is to your spiritual growth. Nobody outgrows food. Nobody. You can't say I've been eating for 40 years. Are we together now? So I need us to be at the same pace so that we don't think it's just a starvation. Remember in the book of Acts 23, don't turn there, there were certain people who went to consult diviners on what to do with Paul and the Bible says they bound themselves with a curse and they said we will neither eat nor drink until Paul dies. Fasting so that an anointed man of God can die. Are we together now? So we need to understand that this that God is doing is to empower us so that we can rise in life. It's a sacrifice that God has designed for our lifting. Even Jesus himself fasted and Jesus was teaching and said, when you fast, not if you fast. And when God declares a corporate fast, there are individual fasts, but there is a corporate fast. That is a commanded fast. Is this not the kind of fast I have commanded? You can do the one you want to do, but when God commands it, it's because there is something that he has in mind. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated for a while. Just pray one prayer. Lord Jesus, open my eyes. Open my eyes to the understanding of your word. Open my eyes. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. Open my eyes open my eyes oh oh
chapter 19 tonight i'm sharing on the power of knowledge the power of knowledge luke chapter 19 in the new testament jesus cried twice the first reason why he cried listen carefully the first reason why jesus cried was when he was weeping at lazarus's grave and the bible records that oh how he loved him so love was one of the first reasons why jesus cried the second reason why he cried is found in luke chapter 19 from verse 41 luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 blessed be the name of the lord luke chapter 19 verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city listen carefully and wept over it saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hidden from thy eyes jesus stood over a city and was weeping he was watching the way the people were guessing their lives and jesus your jesus started crying and his reason for crying is that if you had known the things that are responsible for your peace responsible for your peace not just the, uh, the quietness responsible for your results jesus stood and was crying and his his purpose of crying was the ignorance of the people in that city and the inevitable fact that they would continue to be victims of that ignorance he says you do not know the things that belong for your peace he says but now they are hidden from your eyes meaning that although you are looking you cannot see them this kingdom we have been drumming it from day one of this fast that this kingdom is a kingdom of information is a kingdom of light dominion in this kingdom is a product of knowledge not desire knowledge not intention knowledge hallelujah dominion in this kingdom is not just based on knowledge but based on sufficient knowledge having knowledge is not enough when a student goes to write exams the student is not writing another subject if he gets seven over hundred is that true he failed 93 percent and passed seven percent but the seven percent is not enough to pass the student so having knowledge is not enough there is a level of knowledge it takes for dominion to be true if the light goes off right now and you light a matchbox it is light but it is not sufficient enough to turn the night in this auditorium today so saying you have knowledge is not enough the knowledge must be sufficient to a degree that can bring you the results you desire the problem for many of us is not necessarily ignorance it is insufficient knowledge is god speaking to us we need deep enough knowledge not just knowledge deep enough knowledge about finances deep enough knowledge about divine health deep enough knowledge about the anointing deep enough knowledge about church growth deep enough knowledge about increase having knowledge is not enough it is true that we know some things but the challenge is those things may not hold all the keys that are required to command the results that we desire let me show you a verse that i found very very interesting first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 this blessed me in no small way. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. It says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to. That means the proof that you are knowledgeable is that there is a desire in you for more. 
that the moment there is a point in your life where you believe that you know enough the apostle is speaking that by the spirit that a sense of arrival and complacency is a symptom of insufficient knowledge Sinat sang that the more I know you, the more I want to know you. So when you encounter God, when you encounter the spirit of knowledge and revelation, the sign is that although you are working in great results, there remain a hunger in you for more. I am passionate about knowing the areas of ignorance in my life because there is so much I do not know. Are we together? Everything we desire in the kingdom is available. The grace of God has made it available. But it takes knowledge. Not just faith. Faith must be upon an, a person and an information that is correct. You can have faith in error. You can have faith in an information that is not correct. So it's not just having faith. The object of your faith must be authentic. You need a high level of insight and light. A high level of insight. A high level of light. Are we together? Scattered in this auditorium and all around and all those following us from the nations of the world. The reason, listen carefully. The reason why we have requests, why we have desires, is because there are expectations before us that are not yet our testimonies. There are expectations before us. There are things we desire. Some of you are here tonight trusting God for superior dimensions of the anointing. Some of you here are pastors. You are struggling with membership up today, down tomorrow. And it's not that you are not anointed, but not to the degree to get the results you desire. There are people who are trusting God for certain levels of graces. But you see, the thing is not just to say, I have knowledge. Is it to the degree that can give you the result. I always liken knowledge. I also liken the anointing to money. If I want to take this, this bottle of water, and it is 100 naira, if I have 70 naira, I have money, but not the value enough to purchase this. This is what I am looking for. So I must upgrade that value to the level that it can deliver this result. Are we together? Knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, the prophet of God was speaking by the Spirit and he said, my people. He never said the hidden, my people, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Satan manipulated their understanding to make them see life from a perspective and the result of that aberration is the pain and the discomfort that they have. Knowledge. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance, not just prayer. I told you that not all spirits go by prayer. The Bible never said so. This kind, there is a kind that goes by prayer. There is a kind that goes by prayer and fasting. There is a kind that goes by knowledge. The devourer does not go by fasting. The devourer does not go by knowledge. The devourer goes by obedience to, a, obedience to a correct information. Are we together? I believe in fasting. I believe in prayer. That's what we are doing now. But I'll be lying to you. Many believers keep mocking themselves, thinking just because you are praying and dissipating energy, it will cover for every spiritual predicament. No, sir. At best, God will take advantage of your alignment in prayer to lead you back to an information that is able to help you. In this kingdom, we reign on the strength of the light that we have. John chapter 1 and verse 5 says, The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. For as long as it is night time in your life, weeping continues. The Bible says weeping endureth for the night. You don't stop crying just because you are tired of crying. You stop crying because light enough to turn your night to day. We are calling this place night now simply because something has happened to the sun in as much as we know. And we are not able to receive that illumination sufficient enough. 
to turn the night to day but a few hours now into the morning everything is going to change we rise in this kingdom by light not desire i desire prosperity is not enough to give you i desire to walk in divine hell i desire for that hepatitis to go i desire for that cancer to go i desire for that hiv that fibroid to leave my body i desire for that barren womb to take in it takes knowledge it takes knowledge not just desire hallelujah you hear the testimonies of the people who god is granting them grace don't you think god just chose to bless them now it is now the knowledge has come to them and so it makes it look like this is the season god has wanted to bless you he's always wanted to do it but you only arise and shine when your light comes not when it's available it has always been available but the day it comes to you every lady's womb in this auditorium can take seed but it doesn't make you pregnant automatically the day a real seed enters that womb then the process of conception starts are we together but as you are now seated that womb can produce so it's not enough to just say i have potentials i know what can happen no if god wants to change your life he grants you knowledge every religion that oppresses men in the world thrives through mysticism and ignorance the strength of victimization and oppression is withholding classified information from people the difference between the intelligence unit of the american nation and other nations of the world is their access to classified information there is a kind of information that is not given to the third world nations to know it is only supplied to them if they go and plead with the intelligence unit and then they give them terms is that true as terrible as terrorism is on earth right from space there is a system of watching on earth real time but that information will not be given to you is the privilege of the holders of that information that's why they are called world powers they are not called world powers because they are bigger they are called world powers because they have access to classified information so we reign in this kingdom not just because of how macho we are not just because of how fluent we are but the access to the information the bible says jesus himself knew what to do that's dominion to know what to do good master what must i do to be saved in other words i want to be saved but it's not yet my experience and i know that the bridge between me and that result is knowledge good master what must i do not just that i desire to be saved good master what must i do to be blessed financially what must i do to be lifted what must i do to rise to a realm where my body no longer hosts sickness i shared with us in revelation i don't know which of the days that the bible says when a spirit leaves a man remember a spirit does not leave a man on his own it is casted is that true out of that person in my name ye shall cast out devils they don't want to go but an anointing compels them to leave and then the bible says they go through desert regions listen carefully and something about the desert does something to that spirit and without any prayer warrior praying the spirit leaves the desert and prefers to come back to the man hmm. the desert that something can happen in a desert no prayer meeting going on no fasting going on a spirit can be so uncomfortable in the desert and it will rather return back to the man that means there is something the body of man can become that can make spirits even without any man praying they will leave and that mystery you see in the desert is what the bible calls the mystery of fire this fire you see is a mystery there is something about the heat of the desert physically that does something to spirits and they prefer that's why when jesus casted them they entered the swine straight into the water straight into the water 
and the people drove him and said leave this place when a spirit leaves a man there is something about the habitation of a mortal man that is conducive for a spirit and the moment it leaves it it goes through desert regions and something happens not compatible to their design and he says i have to leave this area of hostility so the bible says he maketh his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire that when a man becomes a flame of fire no spirit no charm no no cause by themselves you will have a dream and watch certain things leave you the first thing that happened to samson they bound his hand and the bible says when the hand of the lord came upon him suddenly heat from nowhere turned that thing the bible says it was like flax and all of a sudden he let it go are we together we must be deeply passionate about spiritual knowledge not useless knowledge there are all kinds of knowledge on earth occultism can give you knowledge about the spirit realm that's why jesus said i am the door the authorized system for routing this knowledge you can read all kinds of books online and that's why we have to be careful especially for we young people because in our appetite to chase knowledge we have found ourselves dabbling into occultic there are books that moses wrote but those books are occultic books your real moses he wrote those books before he encountered god he wrote them as a very good student who was trained in egypt today they use those books for occultism he teaches you geometry how to align yourself to certain angles on the earth that will make you be in touch with the constellations moses taught it so when we talk of knowledge we are not just talking of a random pursuit of anything that is spiritual in this day and age where we measure respect for ministry by how much what we supposedly call debt we must be careful the proof of knowledge is the deliverance that it brings that's why many people keep growing supposedly in revelation and with all that rema the devil oppresses you as if that he's telling you i'm not aware whatever it is you are celebrating i'm not aware true knowledge liberates we pride ourselves with useless knowledge that is incapable of standing the test of time and bringing the victory that we desire stood over the city and wept and said you do not know the things that belong for your peace hallelujah let me show you something psalms 45 and verse 4 psalm 45 thank you jesus it says and in thy majesty write prosperously because of what truth not just meekness not just all of these things and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things write prosperously not because of desire because of truth it says and ye shall know the truth and if it is really the truth you can know what you think is the truth you can know what a pastor tells you is the truth you can know what a denomination tells you is the truth but if it is really the truth the bible says it makes men free there are supposed truths in the body of christ that don't make men free ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth acquiring things that puff us up knowledge that puffs up doesn't heal doesn't deliver doesn't bless doesn't make people closer to god there is power in knowledge there is power in knowledge there is power when knowledge is applied we reign in this kingdom by the mysteries that we know but the manifestation the potency of those truths are brought to the scene when we act the first thing to do is to get knowledge not to act the first thing to do is to build conviction 
through the requisite knowledge that will bring you the result this bible you see is a compendium of all kinds of knowledge that scatter across different subject matters so the assignment of the believer is to walk as though you are walking through a garden and find the details that are responsible in this book is the knowledge that will take anybody from a failure to a success it's true in this book your assignment is to walk with the spirit of god are we together to be able to piece together all the required information not some not as much as you want all the required information in this world there is a system where men can walk in divine health it is true it is true now if your experience has not captured that reality it does not mean the word of god lied it is that you have not been able to construct in your spirit and your mind all the keys that are required to produce that outcome you can give me the ingredients to make fried rice and miss one important ingredient and what i will produce will not be called fried rice yes rice but not fried rice the difference between jollof rice and fried rice is combination rice is there in all of them are we together now yes there's a lot of ignorance in the body of christ there is a lot of cramming scripture there is a lot of quoting scripture there is a lot of devotionals there are a lot of translations of the bible there are so many books but there is very little knowledge that is required because if that knowledge translates to wisdom it will be justified by the children that it will produce hallelujah i don't want the kind of knowledge that puffs me up into pride you know knowledge can do something to you if you are not careful it can bring you to a sense of pride open to john chapter 4 verse you just ah he's going to verse 17 but the person who is talking there is not spiritual he's not god fearing he's under oppression he's sick as he's talking there and broke on top yet the person is telling you i know you are going to verse 17 that's ex the exact kind of knowledge satan needs so he he deceives you into being convinced that you are also a colleague in the realm of results whereas your life is not producing anything i know everything about getting people filled with the holy ghost i can go to acts chapter one yes i know isaiah 28 i know joel chapter two here is a gentleman in need of the baptism and you stand and struggle around there and create all kinds of flimsy excuses i know what the bible says concerning prosperity oh malachi chapter 3 bring ye all the tithes oh you know luke chapter 6 i know for my sake he became poor show me the results show me in your mind and show me in your life how god anointed jesus is it that one i know it i i can even tell you the amplified version and we think that just because we gather those things we have knowledge no sir no sir we must be passionate about knowledge just because they made you a bible study leader in your church does not mean you are knowledgeable you are just the one who is representing the church and that's wonderful continue doing what you are doing but if it is results you are looking for you have to go back it's not a bible study manual that makes you knowledgeable demons don't have respect for those things i'm not against them but i'm saying much more than those things you have to go and sit down Martha was running up and down he said Martha Martha you were worried and 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 um offended about many things he said one thing is needful to sit down at the master's feet lord what is this secret to favor what is it not i know there is favor most of the results we want we believe it exists but how to make it our experience is where the challenge is and that's one of the benefits of fasting ultimately your faith rises but the bible says the kind of fast i have commanded your light will break forth there is something about the supremacy that your spirit man will gain over your flesh because your flesh has been starved of food 
and the strength of the flesh is the availability of food when the flesh is energetic it runs around and plays games but when there is the absence of food it has a way of forcing suppression to your flesh and then your spirit man can hear and understand then shall your light break forth shall your light break forth and your health speedily your health physical health hallelujah only if that our loved ones knew certain truths look at me look at all of us now in this place brothers and sisters look at the knowledge that god has granted us access to imagine what have you had certain revelations and immediately you almost start crying because you wish somebody you love so much think how many times you watch sincere people sincere christians become victims of the oppression of darkness through knowledge shall the just be delivered it takes knowledge to prosper it doesn't just take god to prosper it takes knowledge it takes knowledge to walk in the anointing there must be a desperate desire in your heart and my heart to pant after knowledge to pant after truth he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house i know that that place is bethel the place of bread where there is knowledge i'd rather be than to go around celebrating please hear me those who are standing by the roadside and inside all the overflows right where you are standing the difference between you and any man you admire whether in business in ministry in 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 finances family life whatever it is is knowledge when a man fights with his wife and beats his wife it's not just the presence of demons the demons don't just act anyhow the demons take advantage of the ignorance are we together demons don't just act they don't just veto your will and act they take advantage of the gap in knowledge or the incompleteness of your knowledge and then they take advantage of it it is more dangerous to have incomplete knowledge it's better to have complete ignorance because the days of our ignorance god overlooks god can overlook certain things like you see a little child doing certain things and you are aware that that child does not have an ability to have that knowledge at that level and so you forbear if a small child comes and is rolling here now and playing around we may just guide the child in love but not to flog the child because at that level we expect that to happen but if as an adult you come and you are doing it we will first find out whether it's the holy ghost making you do it and if we find out it's not the one we will send you away and say no 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 you don't do this there is order in the house of god are we together mm. if you say you have been born again that you are in christ you have access to the spirit of god then certain things should be seen in your life that validates the fact that you are walking with the word that validates the fact that you are not just reading your bible in the morning just as a ritual to say be a witness you see me doing my devotion today that's not knowledge it can be religion in fact most times it is religion open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things open down my eyes open down my eyes he said call on to me and i will answer and i will show you not tell you show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things great and mighty dimensions of the anointing that you do not know great and mighty dimensions of influence that you do not know let me tell you this anybody in your life you see with sustainable results in any area do not make a mistake of thinking it is luck are we together now there is no luck in this equation when you see a mother train 11 children and for 30 years those children have remained in a way and manner 
that even shocks you don't just say Kai, madam you are lucky or what kind of anointing is on you no it's not just the anointing god can give you the same anointing on that woman and you won't be able to train one child with it that anointing functions well through knowledge knowledge gives the anointing efficiency knowledge gives the anointing efficiency the anointing does not just work anyhow knowledge gives the anointing efficiency otherwise there would not be need for the renewal of the mind knowledge gives the anointing efficiency you are still anointed but he said let this mind be in you which was in christ jesus hallelujah have you seen a man maybe an old elderly man that didn't have the privilege to go to school didn't have the privilege to learn english but a greatly anointed man you can see that that man utilized less than on a scale of one to ten less than four of that anointing take that same anointing don't change it the same anointing put it on another young man who is more knowledgeable and more vast in scripture that's when you will see the true potential of what that anointing could do that means that old man's lack of knowledge limited the operation of the anointing that's what happened to some of our parents the old people who were prophets they loved god they had dangerous prophetic graces but there was no accurate understanding of the word so the dispensing of their prophetic looks so limited but then you take the same prophetic anointing and you put on someone who is mighty in scripture and you see the kind of miracles and deliverances that will come for people knowledge is important in this kingdom you pay for your ignorance it will not be paid for you will pay for it in this kingdom you will pay for your ignorance you will pay for it in sickness you will pay for it in untimely death you will pay for it in lack of joy you will pay for it in sorrow you will pay for it in all kinds of diseases darkness continues to multiply but it takes those who have light light sufficient to keep the kind of results they desire is god speaking to us we are going to pray but the cry is for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge for knowledge lord give me knowledge why is our family like this we are 20 in the, the entire family but nobody rises you know i watch how i talk to people many times sometimes here on the queue and then around as i travel and they meet me and communicate certain challenges and in all honesty and with all humility i know what they are doing wrong that is responsible for that and i know what they need to do to get the result and then they say apostle pray for me i know just a touch from you as soon as you touch me everything will go and it is true that they can get some measure of results but ultimately they need to sit down and that spiritual laziness they just say that's why we love the prophetic so much not necessarily because we appreciate it that it's from god it looks like an easy remedy and an alternative to sitting down and knowing god so we love it just tell me this business trip will i make it or not i don't want to hear any story though i don't need to learn how to talk to the people if not, i just tell me Just tell me, this lady I'm going to marry, is my morning clear, is my afternoon clear, is my evening clear, or whatever it is. But sir, there are principles to work with women. I don't care. Just tell me. God should be able to know. Our refusal to get knowledge has equated to the strength of Satan in our lives. He looks mighty because our ignorance gave him the ladder to climb that high. Are you hearing what I'm saying? let me say it again that satan looks mighty in our lives because our ignorance provided the ladder for him to climb and look so mighty but when you get knowledge brothers and sisters in my little life i've seen the power of knowledge when knowledge is correct and it is applied to the letter that's when you will see how cheap satan is savior he can move a mountain. My God is mighty to say. He is mighty to say. Forever, author of salvation. He rose 
Jesus and conquer the grave. Jesus conquer the grave. Savior, Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Once upon a time, I'm looking for him. Where is he? Doctor, come. I thought he was there. Do you know once upon a time, this gentleman was a naive young gentleman with a desire to become the future of himself. Is that true? He saw an expectation, but he was a naive gentleman. And all that happened to him in the medical school, they didn't change his clothes, they didn't change his name, they only kept supplying knowledge. When the knowledge was enough, they took him higher. Enough, they took him higher. Enough, they took him higher. One day, someone who was a master in that field looked at him and said, based on the knowledge you have, you deserve a certification to go and practice as a doctor. The difference, as anointed as I am, the difference between me and this guy, if someone is convulsing, I will pray for him because I don't know what else to do. Is that true? All I know in my world is that all wickedness and evil is from Satan. And so that's exactly what I'll do. Because that's my knowledge. And I will watch somebody who is sick, having typhoid fever, and I'm shaking around, and here comes. He already knows that this one, if it can be attended to, it does not kill. So while the mother, he says, hey, help my son. The doctor says, alright. Knowledge gives you stability stability fear is a revelation that there is a gap in knowledge panicking over everything you just hear something on your zing hey they are here again just like they said because there's something you do not know are we together now yes you can see him stand and while he's performing whatever he's doing, his whole medical activity, someone else is there watching and, and panicking. And he says, don't worry. And two days, he just prescribes a drug. Oh, are you doing this? Are you coughing? Are you vomiting? Oh, I see. And the person says, help me. Oh. And the person goes to bed and wakes up the next day as if he's alive. And says, doctor, I'm fine. Knowledge. Knowledge. Is that true? That means there is something you can know that will make you go to bed and wake up the next day in shock and surprise there's something you can know about favor the, the i believe that all of these miracle alerts and all of this they are they are a statement i told you that a sign is a miracle with a message in it god is saying this is how easy i can change your life if you believe me you see the people coming to testify they are even shy they are surprised themselves because it's no respecter of persons. Are we together? Tonight we are going to pray. And I'm going to pray for the sick very fast. Very fast. We can't continue like this. Tomorrow we may not. It's a miracle service. But I don't know if we'll have time to pray for the sick. Because tomorrow God is going to tear the heavens over this place. Aye. Hallelujah. The anointing oil is already... I mean, they carried it out. When I saw the jar coming, I said, please come. <laughs> oh, come, oh, come. Together we will we'll cry and speak every kind of mystery. <laughs> ah! When the woman was saying, there is nothing in my house, the anointing was hearing the conversation. And said, so you are ignoring me. You gathered me among non-living things and said, you don't have anything. He said, change the vessel and see what I can do. The anointing was hearing the conversation. Are you not told that you have an anointing that can teach? In English, when things move, uh, when things move, uh, living things, biology, everything, you said you, you personify things by giving them life and attributes of humans. The oil is a dead thing. It is the anointing that makes the oil alive. The anointing makes anything alive, including a rod that was dead. Are we together? 
So tonight we are going to pray. Listen to me. Let me just give you one truth. Sit down please. Just one. Can I talk about sickness for just five minutes? Look at me. What is it with Satan and sickness and diseases? Please listen. I know that there may be a number of people sick now trusting God for healing. What if I go to the hospital right now? Don't feel bad not talking against you. That's why the power of God is here. If they look at me now and doctor diagnoses me and say, Young man, I just found out that there is a heart palpitation or there is a hole in your heart or there is a tumor in your brain, correct? Or there is a fibroid somewhere some kind of malignant growth blocking your tubes or whatever what exactly is satan achieving with this what is it with satan and the bodies of men what is he looking for i will tell you if you don't know this you will not see the need for the healing ministry the healing ministry is not just a validation that a man is anointed there are many other ways to validate that a man is anointed jesus was very ruthless about healing the healing ministry is not just some showmanship of testimony to show that a man is a good evangelist or apostle or prophet or whatever. No. You see, remember our, our teaching on the, the serpent, the seed, right? The serpent and the woman. That Satan knows that there is a law, right? It's called the law of territory. That you can only be allowed to stay in a territory if you have the requisite demands of that territory i give you an instance if i throw you inside water now you may be able to swim but not forever because that is not your habitation of existence so your design was not made that way but if i throw a fish a fish can stay there forever a man can fly in the air but not indefinite he has to come down even if the plane does not spoil something will happen to his health that pressure gradient will affect him eventually are we together now so we now see that on earth as a human being god's system for functioning on earth is that your spirit must have a body that was built before it becomes legal are we together so if there is no body your spirit is an illegal occupant it may not be illegal in the realm of the spirit and in other dimensions of the heavens but on the earth your body your spirit must be hosted in a material body god himself respected this law when he was about to come to the earth a body has thou prepared for me not a spirit the spirit is still the real me but a body had to be prepared are we together now and so christ could come into that body mary's womb did not produce the word of god mary's womb produced a coat a physical body children are heritage from the lord but they need a body is that true they need a body so here's what satan knows that for as long as there are many bodies it means that there are many spirits that can be hosted in those bodies that have wills and can choose to serve god and can choose to advance the kingdom are you seeing the conspiracy of darkness in trying to create the system of clothing and the rest as wonderful as they are eventually they are antichrist systems in an attempt to to clone different bodies so that these demons remember the demons we have been talking about i hope you know those demons are still looking for bodies till today so they are coming up with a system to make robots and educate the robots to be so intelligent but without spirit so that a demon spirit can come into it there are films like that you watch them where scientists try to make all kinds of robots then they invoke through a central machine a spirit is not acting that's satan's agenda but meanwhile there is a level of health that your body must assume for your spirit to safely stay there you know your body is a house god said it is a temple demon said it is a house so we know that both god and satan agree that this body is a house are we together now and so satan tries to inflict all kinds of damages there is a damage that can happen to my body it will break the body so much the spirit will be will have to leave we call that death a separation are we together every sickness is the first step towards death 
surgery. If I am sick, I am closer to death being sick than I am alive. So, the ultimate goal of sickness is not to bring you down so you will be fine tomorrow. The ultimate goal of sickness is to start initiating the process of death in your life in hope that it will continue. That's why doctors are a real blessing. Those who work in the anointing hate doctors. We love doctors here. We have a lot of them. Because we realize that it would take more than a man of God. This damage that has been done by hell will require people who keep standing. Because even the doctors themselves believe in miracles. They don't talk to the drugs. They just administer it. The drug itself, the system of its operation is a mystery that only God can tell. So medicine itself is a miracle. If you go to the hospital, you attended a miracle service. Because something in that hospital is beyond the knowledge of the doctor. Are we together? So Satan wants to afflict me. Imagine that I came up now and I'm coughing, I'm coughing blood. Think of what it would do to your faith. One. Two. Think of what it would do to, the, to kingdom advance. Are we together? Think of what it would do. So Satan wants it. It's a statement. God, you are not... You are not all that you say. And I'm using your highest creation to mock you. The healing ministry proves the lordship of Jesus in a very significant way. The healing ministry does not just prove the strength of the man of God. It's a testament of the dominion power of God. Doctors understand this. The next time you are injecting somebody, don't just say, are you recovering? Expect something to flow through your contact with that syringe into the person that accelerates the process. So tonight, hear me. If there is any sickness in your body, it's a sign that Satan desires to kill you. It's not a sign that what he, he desires is proof. It is the first stage to begin to deteriorate you. There are people who are sick, but you go to the hospital and they tell you there is nothing wrong. That's Satan for you. A few days ago, a lady brought me brought me um, a photo of someone, I think she's here, just a little boil, eh, Jimmy? little boil on the leg. And within months, this had rotten. If, she, if they turn the other leg, you'll see the bones, physical bones, the flesh had eaten. Is that a boil? Is that how you know that boils work? Another life attaching itself to your body. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. He says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, chapter 10, verse 38, with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about doing good, healing all they that were sick, oppressed. Sickness is an oppression. If you are accommodated, the devil will kill you with that sickness. Everywhere Jesus saw sick people and they were serious enough about their healing. Think of what happened to the woman with the issue of blood. Imagine you were the one that married her and she was your wife. Twelve years of pain watching your wife every day. And here comes Jesus. Imagine the woman who had been bound for 18 years. Imagine what would happen to her family life. The healing ministry is an end time ministry. It's not for healing evangelists. It's not for apostles. It's part of the tools that make us demonstrators of the reality of the life and power of God. The power of God must be demonstrated upon his highest creation. Not just plants and animals. And tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm trusting the Lord that there are people here who will wave goodbye. Do you know what God is going to do? God is going to turn your own body into a volcano and no devil, no spirit. The same way they leave deserts in peace. That's how they will have to walk out of your body in peace. Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah Hallelujah, you have won it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the risen King. See, 
for an exposition of your area of ignorance. Lord, reveal to me what do I need to know? What do I need to know to take me to the next dimension? In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray everywhere. Lift your voice and begin to pray.